Okay. Okay, then, uh, good evening, uh, good evening all, and uh, members and Delia, good evening to you all. Um, Finance Committee, Tuesday the 14th of July. Uh, any members apologies for absence, Delia? Um, yes, uh, Chairman, I have apologies for absence from um, Councillor Hume. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do we know what's wrong with him? No, <laughs> just, just oh. no, he's not, I just know he's not, um, not well enough to be at the meeting. Okay. Um, any members' declarations of interest? Item two. No, right out, thank you. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting. Sorry, Chair, I was just washing my hands. Um, I have a, um, I'm on the allotment. I have a, uh, um, a request of an allotment from the Town Council in Newton Leeds, and I do believe that that is on the agenda tonight. Yep. However, I just believe it's about the handover, so um, yeah. I may decide not to vote. You declare an interest, but non pecuniary. Yes. That's fine, that's fine. Thank you, Ethan. Um, item three, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, go through it one page at a time. Uh, page one. Page two. Page three, page four. Are they agreed? Yeah. Agreed. All agreed? Okay, agreed. thank you, all agree. Thank you, we'll arrange for those to be signed at, at a later date. Thank you. Uh, item four, public speaking, speaking we've time. Had, there are no, no, no we've had none. Right. So we go to page five. Um, agenda item five, uh, detailed income and expenditure. Uh, I, have, I have got some items to draw your attention to on this. I'm happy to do them after you've asked any questions or before or however you wish to do it. No, page just, by page, whatever you like. Should we do it page by page? Yes, by all means. Page. Right, so if we do page five. Uh, page five, uh, if I can just draw attention to the, at the bottom of the page, Senior Youth Club, um, you can see that the, um, it appears that we've spent £7,411 on um, Senior Youth Club this year to date. Now, um, that is actually only, uh, that should only, uh, uh, that invoice which, which was paid at the end of the financial year, really only £1,853 of it should have been um, included in this year's accounts as a prepayment. But oh. because that invoice covers the term from January to um, April, however, we already had three termly invoices in last year's accounts. Um, so it was included in this year's account, but I just want to clarify for later on in the agenda, when we come to talk about the Senior Youth Club, um, that we haven't made any payment to Youth Network MK um, for the term from April, uh, from May Almost. to July, yeah. Okay. So okay. You, you may, I just wanted to clarify, because you might have thought that we paid for this term, but if you remember, we discussed all this and we haven't paid for it, but it's because we already had three terms worth of payments in last year. At some stage, we need to clarify this. You know, we need to we need to bite the bullet and have four payments in a yeah. year. Yeah. Possibly this year would be the year to do that. Yeah, that, this, is, that sort of thing's happened before, do you? Yeah, it? yeah. Okay. okay. Um, page six. I haven't got anything on page six. Uh, right, no, no one's asked to speak. Page seven. Page seven. Um, I'd just like to mention Albert Street toilets here, um, and not particularly um, anything to do with the um, uh, finances, although I did just want to remind everyone that we're now paying, since we've reopened the um, disabled toilet, we are paying for the the, con the full contract price again, yep. even though the main toilets are not open. 
Now, um, as an officer team, we've done quite a lot of work on um, the potential reopening of the toilets, which I know we've, we've discussed before, and council has been quite um, um, reluctant to, to, um, to reopen for reasons of public health. However, um, we now have a risk assessment that is acceptable to our um, health and safety advisors, our competent person. Um, our insurers are happy with the arrangements we have proposed. And as a management team, we feel quite strongly that we should, in fact, reconsider opening to the public again as soon as possible. We are getting feedback from, from the community that people would like to have the toilets open. The town is getting a lot busier. More mm -hmm. people are using the buses and the bus station and the drivers obviously rely on the toilets. And um, I, we are minded as a management team to, to reopen the toilets fairly soon. I just wanted feedback really from this committee to um, take a sounding on your view about that. Anyone want to have a go? Mm -hmm. uh, Gary, then then uh, Ethan. Gary, uh, Councillor Ken, whether you need to mute, unmute yourself. Mm. Councillor Ken, whether he had a bit of a problem with this last time. Yeah. He is unmuted at this end. Perhaps can't. Gary, we'll, we'll come back Sorry. to you. Shall we? Oh, oh okay. I think he's he's yeah, got Okay. <laughs> We've got you now, Councillor Kenworthy. Carry Thank on. You. Thank you, Town Clerk. Thank you, Chair. Um, if we have, with the insurance and the risk assessment, I do believe we need to open up uh, the, the toilets. There isn't any other blue porter cabins around there at the moment. Uh, and alternative facilities. So I'm totally in favour of opening up Albert Street fully. Thank okay. you. Thank you. E Ethan? If our, if our health and safety advisors say it's safe, it's safe. Well, I think, I think, I think we, you know, members of the public will need to exercise their own good judgment about um, mm. uh, behaving properly in, in, in the, in the um, public conveniences, which is, is always a um, Chair, Chair, can I just um, please ask for a pricing of the of the main points of the risk assessment? Yes, um, in the in the um, in the ladies' toilets where we have four cubicles, we'll just be opening two cubicles in order to keep um, uh, you know distance between. Um, so we've had signage prepared for the for the front doors, which asks people to make themselves known as they're going into the toilet as it were and alerts them to the fact that there's only one way in and one way out and they need to be careful as they're going in and out that signage has been prepared and it's very clear there'll be signs inside the toilets there'll be markings on the floor we are not changing our um uh, provision of um hand drying um, we're still we're still leaving um, we're still leaving the hand drying in uh, using the machines. Um, toilets will be checked regularly um, by the rangers every day. The cleaning regime is will be pretty much as it already is, um, but with perhaps just one extra visit per day, um, uh, and that will be a top up by the rangers rather than by the cleaning company. In the gentlemen's toilets, there's only one cubicle. That will be left available, and then the uh, the urinals and the middle sink in the in the um, gentlemen's toilets will be cordoned off, as it were. There'll be there'll be um, tape. I mean, we can't them. actually stop people using them if they're absolutely determined, but they'll be taped off. They'll be advised not to use it, and there'll be markings on the floor so that um, okay. people can make a help to maintain social distancing. Same arrangements with the cleaning. There'll be um, the usual hand wash, water, and a hand dryer. Okay, Michael. Uh, yeah, curious about that one. Was that an official recommendation from our competent person to only have alternate or two of the cubicles in the ladies open? Yeah, it was just to, because they're they're quite you know they're quite close together. You, you, when you come out of the cubicles, you're quite close together. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah so it was but what we thought we'd do is try it with two because there's, it's, a, it's a balance if we then get a queue building up that's obviously more detrimental than having the people using the cubicles so we thought we'd try it with two closed and see how that goes for the first week yeah. And will we be marking the floor outside the toilets? Yeah, there'll be um, pavement stickers if there's a need for a queue showing which way the queue should go. OK. Any other comments from anyone? Michael? Um, oh, just quick, what are we adding sanitizer no. stations? No, yeah. we're not because it'll be stolen. Um, yeah. The concern is that it'll be stolen. Um, everything we put in the public toilets is stolen. That's, oh. the, you know, that's why we moved away from paper towels. Um, the from time to time the soap dispenser is broken into but if we put I mean as you know the sanitizer is incredibly expensive the effective sanitizer is incredibly um, expensive and yeah. our experience would lead us to believe that it'll just be stolen so that is not included in the risk assessment unfortunate but yep yeah, I understand Any, anyone else wants to comment yes please yes please okay Ron yeah, uh, with the gents' toilets, really all we need to do with that is block off the middle one so no one can use it, and then you've got your social distances. That's what they've done in all the other toilets I've been in. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I said. The middle urinal oh, right, and yeah, the middle yeah. sink will be the blocked. Middle, yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Okay. The middle of the urinal and the middle sink. Yeah. Right, so we agree that we, we proceed to opening the toilets. Gary? Um, oh, yeah, right. we agree. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, there's so many bus drivers now are lady bus drivers as well so the ladies is important don't get sexist gary now yeah, then men are, are as important too um all those in favor then then we open the toilets as soon as we can yeah that's unanimous thank you thank you um right page eight i don't have anything on page eight page nine uh, page nine, um, if you can look at 408, please, which is George Street. The, um, we have, um, as you know, we're part way along with the um, renovation works. In fact, we're, we're really approaching the end of the renovation works. Um, and um, Will has um, put in an application to Milton Keynes Council to draw down the Section 106 funding, which will go some way towards meeting the um, the cost. Um, the if you look at page, uh, if you look at line four nine five three, where it says miscellaneous costs, mm -hmm. those those costs should actually be on the line below, which is renovation works. They've been miscoded in error. Okay, right. Yeah, so they'll be moved. <laughs> they'll be journaled and moved so that they're showing in renovation works because we're trying to avoid using any miscellaneous cost codes. Yep. Um. The, we, I've also received um, an email today uh, with photographs from um, uh, from Will. Um, there's another problem with the floor. I'm afraid the saga with the floor at, um, at George Street still hasn't finished. Um, there is now a crack in the concrete greed uh, that was not um, seen until more of the floor was lifted. And it looks likely that we're going to need to do um, uh, take some additional action to uh, deal with that crack, which is letting damp into the floor. So uh, I don't have enough information to um, update you other than to alert you to the fact that that's um, happened and that uh, there'll be a report to full council on the next occasion about the floor. But it may be we were due to have finished the work at George Street uh, on Friday, and um, it seems likely that we'll now be delayed with that because of this additional work. Um, and it may be that we need to make a decision on grounds of urgency about how we proceed with the floor before full council. Um, I don't. I have no idea yet what the costs will be. But maybe something that it's it's reasonable for me to use my delegated powers for. On the other hand, it might not be, um, in which case we'll have to um, deal with it as and when it, it crops up. But I just wanted to alert everybody to the fact that um, 
completion of the works is now likely to be further delayed and obviously that's very disadvantageous for our tenant who is keen to get back into the building as soon as possible so we will um we will make every effort to um complete the works in as timely a way as we can two things do you if i may is the whole of the park parky floor up now so they can see the base um i have, Will did a site inspection today. I didn't go, um, so I haven't seen it. Um, so, I think they've. I think no they've one seen. It, I think they've seen it all now. I don't think they're going to find any more. Second point: What is the limit of your financial authority? I think I've got three thousand for it for, for on the grounds of urgency. It depends how much it's going to be. Can we? Or could we, as a committee, in fact, um, allocate an emergency fund into that uh, so that works don't stop and they can get go keep going? Um, I mean, if we, if we, I'm thinking, say, if we approve an emergency uh, allocation of, five, say, five thousand pounds, yeah, you still you still have five three thousand uh, in addition to that. It would it would hopefully allow the works to not stop. Um, yes, um, we, the only problem with that is it would have to come from reserves because we don't have enough in the budget and reserve spending is reserved for full council, generally speaking. Oh, well, but why, why, why can't we use, for instance, repairs and renewals? Oh, that is reserves. That's reserves, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Got that's off. reserves. Um, yeah okay. um i think you know I, i've got absolutely at this stage i've got absolutely no idea what the likely cost could be it could be you know a small amount it could be a large amount i'm waiting to hear from our um surveyor who's um, supervising the work mm. and so i don't i don't I, I don't think there's much that can be done tonight um within within our scheme of delegations there's got to be uh, um, Eamon? Do you think we could have some photographs of the said floor? Yes, I will. Say, I have got some photographs and I will send the photographs on, but I only received them today. So, yeah, no. I will send them on. Yeah. There's got to be a mechanism where we've got authority to spend emergency money somewhere. Well, we have, we have in, the, in the past, we have um, um, in consultation with the um, chair and vice chair. Um, and um, if necessary, we'll have to have an extraordinary meeting. But I'm, I'm very hopeful that won't be necessary. Oh. All right. It's a shame. We need to look at it, I think. I think so. I think maybe um, because we don't have any contingencies in, in the budget, if I can find somewhere else in the budget as we're going through the meeting where we could perhaps move okay. some money, I'll, I'll be thinking about it while we're talking. OK. It does seem daft that a committee can't authorise expenditure, but for instance, yourself can. Well, you, you can authorise, I can only do it within budget and so can you. You've got spending powers of up to 20,000, but it has to come from within the budget. It has. It can't come from reserves. Right, so we can allocate it from somewhere else. You can allocate it from somewhere else, okay. yeah. Ethan? Can it not come out of 4968? Renovation. 4968. What renovation works? What, yeah, what, um, um, yeah, that's a good point. It can come out of there. Yeah, and then, well, no, no, that, then we'll have to. It'll then we'll have to move some other money. Yeah, at full <laughs> council, <laughs> if that's all right. Okay. Yeah, so, thank you, Ethan. That's that's very helpful. So, a good we, question. We we, we will. Well, can can we agree that we will authorise an emergency allocation or uh, transfer of say five thousand pounds from renovation works? Yeah. Is that ha is everyone happy with that? Those yeah. in, that, those in favour. That's that's unanimous. Yeah. Thank you all both. I did say that this floor. I did think I gave a number. I think I'm very close. I think we are getting close to it. 
Oh, we're, I'm, we are going to come back to this vinyl floor in the end. I can see it now. No. Let, let's move on, shall we, Chair? <laughs> PDQ, I think, Chair Clark. Um, uh, anything else on page nine, Delia? Yes. Um, just on a, a 411 Community Infrastructure Fund, you can see that the income has been received 3496. That's the um, the um, funding from um, Milton Keynes Council for the 2019-20 Community Infrastructure Fund project. So we've had that funding. Right. Thank you. Uh, page 10. Yeah, on on um, staff costs 501. There's a um, one anomaly you might spot on um, 4525. Staff uniforms and equipment, it looks like we spent 95.9% of the budget. Um, that's because the loan worker solutions that were approved um, have, um, have been costed to that cost centre um, on the basis of equipment. Um, I'm not sure it's the best place for it to be. We might move it, but that's where it got coded. Um, we're, we're just awaiting... We've, we've, um, Authorised a pro forma invoice for that, and we're just waiting for um, delivery of that um, the loan worker solutions, and that will be coming this by the end okay. of this week. Um, anything on? Yeah. Anything else? And then on five oh three, uh, council support services four oh one two. Yeah, that's the gladiator machine which um councillor hayne will be prepared to tell you he saw in action on friday uh the machine has arrived and the training took place on friday and that invoice will be processed um during july go on in ron tell us yeah it, it, they had it out near the uh near where the car park is and uh it, it's never been done before there and uh they had a bit of a problem with picking it up, picking up the uh, water because of uh, the amount of rubbish was there. But it, it done a good job in the end. It's a it's a good machine, and it, all it needs now is when when with the training is get the speed of walking to get the machine working with the right pace. And all them sort of machines, I used to work them in the Royal Mail. You've got to get once you get your walking speed, the rest of it comes naturally. But it, it do a, do a good job. And a lot of people was quite impressed that was watching it as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ron. Just, um, and just just to, to add to that, the car park has been um, cleared by Serco today, so it's a shame it wasn't this Friday, really. But um, it uh, yeah, it seemed to go really well. It seemed to go really well. Okay. Long long awaited, I'm afraid. Right, page eleven. Another little anomaly that you might spot on, um, again, where it looks as though we've overspent the budget on um, 4585 general maintenance. Yeah. That's because we've had to spend quite a lot of money on PPE, um, uh, masks, gloves, sanitizer, that kind of thing. Um, and although we haven't provided sanitizer in the toilets, they are, it is available in all our other buildings. Um, and that's been coded there. I'm not quite sure again why that was coded there, but it was, and um, that's why there's a, a um, an overspend there. But I'm sure that in the course of the year there will be a compensating underspend elsewhere in that particular uh, cost centre. Okay. Anything else on uh, on, on page eleven? No. Um, no, not really. Right. Uh, page 12, members, anything? I just wanted to draw attention to bottom line on uh, Newton Lee's Pavilion and on the market, which are obviously a consequence of COVID-19. Yeah. I mean, it is, that's where you can really see the damage, the financial damage to the council. Um, in the income from Newton Lees and I mean the the market income I don't think is all a consequence of, of um, COVID-19 because the market income has been on a steady decline for the last you know eight years um, but um, 
but obviously COVID's not helped. Uh, it's exacerbated the existing problems on the high street, really, and certainly it's um, affected the market traders badly. Well, it's only the last, in the last few years, if the, the, the income from the market's gone what, from about 30 odd thousand down to an estimate of 12, isn't it? So mm. it's OK, uh, page 13, which is uh, cash and investment reconciliation. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. That's item six, beg your pardon. Um, sorry, so item five. Sorry, Ethan, yeah. I just wanted to ask, Chair, if um, the from the last meeting, I think that we had a conversation about the key tenant of the pavilion and whether those conversations have been had I think the matter might be commercial and yes, so I not, think I can, not for any detail but I think I can and ju I can just reassure um members that the offer that was put forward was accepted very gratefully and um it was agreed to um bring the arrears up to date and to um agree to the arrangements for um September onwards which we which we'd laid out right thank meeting. you good yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, so, is, is um, so item five is agreed? Agreed. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, item six, uh, cash, cash and investment reconciliation. Yes. Um, you've got quite a lot of pages on that, more than you would normally get, which yeah. is, um, is due to um, a little glitch. But I think you've got everything you need there. Yeah. <laughs> Apart yeah. from obviously the bank statements, and nobody's been in to um, look at the bank statements since the last finance committee, and we do need to get that sorted out. Yeah, okay. So that the bank statements are checked against the um, cash book and the reconciliation, and we get a signature on them. Yeah. So that's page 13 and 15. It goes uh, up to page um, yeah. 29. Yeah. Because as I say, you've got extra papers than you, more than you would usually get. So we're going to go through 19 and 21. Um, 23, 25, um, 27 and 29. And then that, that's the end. Yeah. So Next item is uh, page 31, which yeah. is the balance sheet. Which is item seven. Yes. Um, just clear, clear, be clear. Everyone happy with item six? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. We agreed. Uh, so item seven, uh, balance sheet. Uh, that gives the details of where the money is and represented by. Any comment on that? No. No. Thank you. Item eight. Oh, this is the movement of money, isn't it, uh, Delia? Yeah, these are payments. These are the payments um, made or due to be made. Um, so there are payments that were either made in, in um, June or yep. are due to be made during July, up to the 8th of July, I think. Yeah question of whether there's any um the, the first page is, is obviously an internal transfer two internal transfers and then the um ooh, my agenda again. and then the um the remaining pages the payments that are um, to be ratified yeah up so to the end of page 37 page, yeah page 35 uh, 36, 37. No comments? Agreed? Do we agree that? Item, yeah. item eight? Okay. Yeah, agreed. Thank you. Uh, right, so we go to item agenda nine. Uh, additional vehicle. Yes. Chairman, um, there's uh, an additional short report from... Um, from a premises, environment and premises manager and some additional quotations. Um, I think the report self-evident, um, I think um, 
So there's a couple of points that I'd just like to make about this this um, leasing of this vehicle. Um, Will has prepared this report and he has put forward options for hire purchase and lease purchase. Now, uh, my understanding is that that is not really an option for the town council because we are not um, uh, we, we're not um, authorised to borrow except from the Public Works Loan Board. Mm -hmm. And um, in any event, we have adequate reserves, so there should be no need for us to borrow. Leasing, I think, was looked at in the first instance because the Town Council didn't want to make a long-term commitment to an additional vehicle. But if you look at the figures which... Um, Will has prepared in his table. Um, he's done a very approximate and conservative um, uh, value of the sale of an asset, looking at the different vehicles and what we could likely get if a vehicle was purchased by way of resale. So he's looked at all options, but as I'm saying, it's my understanding that lease purchase and higher purchase are. Um, off the table so it has to be actual leasing or purchase as far as the council's concerned. Um, I don't know if, if you will be minded to revisit purchasing. I, I'm not entirely sure why leasing was preferred um, because it doesn't, on the basis of the further information that we've now got, it doesn't seem to me as the most the most cost effective use of public money but I think it was the idea that it was a temporary arrangement if we're looking at a long-term lease I think um it would be better to consider purchase okay um, um, I, I, I think it was um I think it was Ed in particular was anxious that we didn't extend our long-term arrangement beyond what would possibly be a, uh, an electric vehicle solution um, so that's why I think the leasing of three years. Yeah. But Ethan, yeah. come on. You're, you're muted. You're muted, Ethan. I'm sorry, Chair. Um, I, I, my recollection of the meeting, of the last discussion that we had, was that we would um, lease or buy for a three-year period. I'd be more than happy to buy, but I have concerns about from running a vehicle fleet that... Uh, that um, we do extend beyond the warranty period when it gets expensive. So if it's subject to a two, three year warranty for the vehicle, then I think that we should um, look to sell at that point. And I think um, Councillor Hume's point was hopefully in that time period, the electric options would have been, would have come on enough um, that we yeah. could actually get one. Um, separate point, but I was at, I actually read in the paper this weekend that um, uh, Centrica, British Gas, are going to be the Vauxhall Movano, the e Movano's launch customer, and have bought um, something like three thousand vehicles. Um, so it looks like they will be coming along very very soon. <clears throat> well, um, the, the 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 contract purchase, of course, would give us both options, wouldn't it? At the end of a three-year lease, you then can either return the vehicle or buy it. Um, and so that would seem to, to meet um, all the, the, the views that were held at the meeting uh, and were expressed. I don't know if anyone's got any alternative views. G Gary? Uh, I'm not sure if I've gone back on mute. Have I? No, no, no. no. Stay no. unmuted. Thank you. Um, I think one of the concerns is what um, a diesel resale price is second hand now and what money you'll get for it could be a lot lower in three years time. Now that's one of the other issues. Uh, and also Council Hume and myself are going, if we're going down the diesel route, we're not uh, into the climate change, the environmental type of things. So just actually purchase one doesn't mean in three years time, we're gonna get much money for it because they are becoming so unpopular. But it's good uh, the point by um, uh, being made about Centrica. That's a very, very good point. The, the electric will be here soon and we will have a suitable vehicle soon. 
Okay, so I mean, are, are, are we not leaning towards contract purchase? Which is, yeah. Yeah. which gives us the option uh, after three years uh, of returning the vehicle or purchasing it. Sure, so I think... If, 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 sorry, sorry Jeff, Ethan. If, if, uh, in other words, if the, if the second-hand value has deteriorated badly, we can just return the vehicle. Ethan, sorry. I was going to say, um, I believe what the, what the clerk just said, and I think the, the word purchase is repeated three times in three different sections. But my understanding is that both contract purchase and hire purchase are a finance agreement. So the only options that we have available to us are contract hire, which is leasing, or the brand new purchase. Did I have that correct? That's my understanding. Yes, I mean I can I, I can I can double check that, but that is my understanding. Because it, it because the contract purchase. Is a, is a finance agreement. So it's contract hire. Yeah, oh, but it's still based on a finance agreement. Yeah, but Does by it... law, uh, sorry to come in, a finance agreement uh, in terms of vehicle is a loan and comes under uh, consumer acts and trade acts. So it is a loan agreement by law, by definition. So, so it isn't, isn't contract hire a loan agreement as well no your rent no, is rent because it's a, it, you're you're paying to use something that you're not buying it you're not borrowing to buy it you're paying to use it right that's the difference you put in money right forward the other is you're borrowing money to pay the debt right so <laughs> All right, you've got contract hire or brand new purchase. Ethan? Just to come back on this point, Chair, if I may, I think that we've got a decision here between knowing what we're going to pay every month for three years and it's slightly co co cost and it costing us more, potentially, uh, but knowing that every month we're going, we're going to be depreciating as we go. In, uh, if, we, if we buy it, the other option is that we are taking a gamble on the resale value in the future. Um, and, and of course, so is the leasing company, and that's why it's, they price it accordingly to make sure that in three years' time, they've still got an asset of value. So it's just what's important to us. I think I think I probably would go down the um, down down the brand new purchase route, having heard the information that I've said. Per, take the point that Councillor Ken Worthy has said about us not knowing what the resale price is in the future. But if we go back to Vauxhall in three years' time and say we'd like to exchange this for one of your new e-electric vehicles, we may be able to do a deal then. Right, any other comments, anyone? I think that was very well yeah. put by uh, Councillor uh, Kelly Wilson in terms of our options about assets, the discount cash flow, the risk assessment. It was well summarised. Eamon? Yeah, we're not going to get much mileage out of these vans, so they will, really will keep their price. You know, the money over a period of, say, five years, two vehicles five years old, and one's only done a quarter of the mileage, the price would be brilliant on it. Right. So, and plus, just to say, I'd like to clear up, having driven vans and pickups all my life, I think you're slightly confused of what they're called. We've got a, at least a full size drop side van, well, there's no such thing. Right. Well, Henry's a pickup, you know. So what are we buying here? Are we buying a van or a pickup? A pickup. Oh, so scrub the van word then, which keeps on popping up every five minutes. Right. So, uh, so we're we're suggesting then, are we not? Um, a brand new purchase. Is that is that agreed? I'll go yeah. with that now, Chair. Those in, well, let's go. Those in favour. Right, that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, now, the second part, which one do we go for? Uh, either the Vauxhall or the Nissan? Well, Japanese is better by far. Ethan? They're both made by Renault in France. It's yeah, no, um, In fact, there's damn all... It's a batch-engineered vehicle. Same chassis, same, yeah. Mm. Um, 
So I'll, I'll, we, I'm using sort of a broad meat evaluation of a, con, of a tender contract. It would be the, the uh, Nissan, wouldn't it? Ethan? I propose, I propose that um, even though the, um, they are made in France, the Vauxhall is a British brand and I would like to support um, um, our, our local um, vehicle maker in Luton. <laughs> it's not doing anything for the British industry. That's um, can I say something here? Yeah. yeah, go on. It's not our money, it's the taxpayers and that's who I'm thinking of. The taxpayers are finished Stratford and Bletchley. Now, if we get a Japanese pickup, it'll hold its price, it'll be low mileage, and you'll get a good deal after three years. End off. Right. Michael. I'm going to throw a little spanner in the works here. Come on in. You know, particularly if we're looking at, say, possibility of you saying Vauxhall having their electric for a trade in. Are we likely to get one, a better part trade in a few years' time? From a Vauxhall or a Nissan. Nissan, Nissan might as well. The Nissan are much better. I'm, I'm trying to get a, a, trying to get a consensus view of the view here. I'm not I'm not winning. Um, Ron, have you got any views? Please. Yeah, well, I've, I've always been in favour of leasing because if anything goes wrong, it doesn't cost you nothing. Um, I'm afraid you know, that's you, not correct. Yeah. No, no, yes, no, yeah. no, Ron, we've agreed we're going to purchase. We're going to purchase. I know that, but I've just said I've always agreed that. I would go along the route of a Vauxhall for the simple reason it's, as Ethan said, it's one of our local people. <laughs> but there again, it, it's whatever you can get on your re resale price, which is be the best. So you, what you'd have to do is look at what your retail, your resale price, what they are now, before you go down that road and say, well, what will we get if we were selling it now? Right. Yeah, you yeah. Know, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. D Delia. Right. This, this was mentioned at the last on the last occasion that leasing meant there were no other costs. That's not correct. The, the, none of the leasing contracts um, uh, cover uh, maintenance. They just don't. Mm. Um, so that's the first thing. Secondly, I think my concern here is that the original decision of council was to lease. And what we were meant to be doing tonight was finalising the leasing arrangements. Um, but when the figures came in they were considerably more expensive than the figures that have previously been quoted to council i think that the the um the the cost of the vehicles the the potential resale of the vehicles nobody has a crystal ball and knows what's going to happen in the next three years but these have been estimated very conservatively um taking into account the current information that we have at the time now but this quote, this, this report is based on leasing um, either contract hire, lease purchase or hire purchase. And as I've said, I don't think those are really options. Perhaps what you need to have is a specific report at full council in two weeks time with um, a, a more information about the, the purchase, the costs of purchase on the different vehicles. Dear, oh dear. Making well over well of this, folks. Um, okay. well, I, I, I just want you to have the... I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm anxious for the council to make the best decision. The decision of full council was to lease. Yes. And we expected to just finalise the leasing details tonight. But the leasing details are not really as we expected them to be. And therefore, I, if you feel you have enough information, that's entirely a matter for you. But I wonder if, you know, if one option for you is to consider whether you do have enough information and whether you want any other information before you make this decision. OK, I'm, 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 I will confess I am now somewhat lost. When we say we're going to lease a vehicle, the type that we issue, none of that includes a lease. We've got contract hire, contract purchase, Higher purchase a brand new vehicle. Where's the lease coming to that lot? Please. Contract hire, chair. That's leasing. Yeah. Contract hire. That, that's why um, World included the glossary and there's a column 
which says, you know, because these quotes, he's tried to put them into a table, or he has put them into a table, not tried. He's put them into a table to enable you to compare contract hire, lease purchase, and hire purchase. I'm saying the only options you've got are contract hire and purchase. There are no purchase details in here. Because we were meant to be agreeing a leasing arrangement. Yeah, I mean, and you can you're still it's still open to you to do that. Well, can, alternatively, can, if you want to revisit purchasing, perhaps you need more information about purchasing. I, I'm just going back to the glossary of terms on page thirty nine, which says contract hire, off balance sheet method where a company hires a vehicle for a specified period, and yeah. a contract purchase, an on balance sheet method which is similar to contract hire but where a purchaser can, as, as the option at the end. Mm. Um, but we're now being told that isn't the case. No, what I said to you is that I'm, I, I need to double check whether that's um, permissible within the accounts and audit regulations, because my understanding yeah. is that it isn't. And Will didn't, didn't know that when he prepared that report. Right. I may be wrong, I may be wrong, but um, it, I would like the opportunity to double check. Right, well, but in any case, contract purchase um, is the most expensive, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's the cheapest. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> well, high purchase you can't do. We said that. But of that, contract, contract purchase comes down at £8,400. Uh, right. So we can't make a decision, right? Can we, go, we want to go, got to go back to uh, find out whether we can do something or not. The only, the only two, um, I beg your pardon, I misread the table. At the bottom two, you have got two purchase quotes. I beg your pardon. Yeah. It's been a long day. So you have got two purchase quotes if you want to look at that. But again. But that's not the council's decision of the council. That wasn't the decision that full council made, so no. It would... you, you can't now go. And, uh, I don't you think can't so, agree no. With purchase. You can't no, do it. No, I don't think so, no. no. Michael. I, I have a proposal. Right. Okay. It is to recommend to full council that due to the financial differences, or sorry, the increased cost and value of um, leasing and because of the period of three years that we want, that we in fact now pursue a brand new purchase. Right. Seconder for that. Gary, thank you. Yeah, I agree with the proposal. I'd like to make a few comments as well. Yeah. Uh, well, any other comments, any other amendments to that at all? No. Right. Gary. Well, basically, um, Councillor O'Rourke's point about the mileage and the resale. Also, if we go for a Japanese conscious, low emissions French production line, I think in terms of trading, swaps, any of those things, we'll be better off with Nissan as a brand because they have policies for electric and low emissions above anyone else. You know, they, they have some of the biggest legislative drivers in the world. So that would encourage me that we should be able to get a better deal with Nissan. Right. Um, any other comments? So we've got a proposal and a seconder that we recommend to council purchase. Um, right. Those in favour of the proposal? Four. Four in favour. Those against? Abstention? Sorry, I'm not against. I'm four. You're four. Five yeah. in favour. Five in favour. I'll abstain. <laughs> Right, so it's, it's a recommendation. Purchase. the recommendation to purchase. Do you wish to make a recommendation about which of these two vehicles? Yes. Right. The... Uh, of the of the two, do, is it the uh, Mavano or the Nissan? Uh, proposal, Michael. Nissan. Seconder. Pro Nissan. Right. Those those in favour of the Nissan. Yep. 
Unanimous? That's unanimous. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, you know the I... speak between the van and the pickup now. <laughs> Thank you for that input, Eamon. <laughs> Item 11. Community Infrastructure Fund. Yes, you've got um, on the on page 43 and page 44 and page 45, um, I would ask you to note the um, outcome of the Town Council um, application to the uh, Community Infrastructure Fund for 2020 to 22. Um, the um, as you see that, that the, the project that we've put forward, we only put forward the one project this time, it's been approved. Um, there is a slight difference in price. Um, uh, and I hope that you agree that um, there are no reasons for us not to go ahead with this based on these, um, the details provided in the paperwork because there is a full resolution from council putting forward this and uh, I have already indicated to Milton Keynes Council that I anticipate that there will be no problems. Michael, then Ethan. Right, I'm happy with this. It's good news. But uh, just curious, what were the changes they wanted? Um, Sorry, no. It's the, the, I think it was the wording, just the wording of the signs, which we've got to consult on. Right. Ethan? And, and the cost, obviously, the cost has gone up. So... Having had a look at the map, I think there is a little bit of a problem because um, this appears to be one sign only and it appears to be on Skew Ridge. Mm. And uh, um, what I felt was discussed at the meeting was a sign um, on Skew on Skew Bridge or just after Skew Bridge. So when you go when you come from Eton South into Newton Lees, and also if you look at the bottom of the roundabout, you can see the red road that's shaded out is the A4146. And you have a road which comes off of that, which is Jersey Drive. And the, I was expecting that there would also be signage there because that is one of the main points to Newton Lees. I think that um, when um, we compared the outcome to the application, it matched the application we made. Mm. Um, however, I will go back and double check it. Um, but we believe it matched the application that we made. The, the, um, there is obviously still scope to do more in the way of signage. It just won't be eligible for the community. Infrastructure I, I, I think what I'm proposing to, to um, the committee is that we accept the funding and actually on the basis that everybody, every other um, ward within the council, um, they, they are welcomed at, at both ends of their, of, of their road, that Newton Lees has the same. And if there's any further funding that's required, that it comes from the council. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll second that. Any other comments? Can we take a vote on uh, Ethan's proposal? Uh, those in favour, that's unanimous. So we're asking, we will ask for an additional sign that we're going to pay for, at, is it Jersey Road, Ethan? Jersey, Jersey Drive. Drive. Jersey Drive, yeah. Just north of the roundabout. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, Item 12, reserves policy. Yes, the committee asked me to revisit the um, reserves policy on the last occasion. Um, so on page 47 and 48, you've got a brief extract of relevant advice from um, a couple of sources on uh, um, reserves. Since our reserves uh, strategy was written, um, the advice from in the practitioner's guide has changed, so it was timely that the reserve strategy was re revised. Um, I have amended the previous document to take account of the advice that's on page um, 
47 and 48. So pages 48, 49 through to 51 is the new policy. And I've renamed it a policy rather than a strategy in order to give it a bit more longevity and suggested that we have the, the reserve schedule separate from the policy and we revisit the schedule on an annual basis and we revisit the reserves um, policy slightly less frequently. Um, so it's there yep. for you to look at. Um, I hope that the uh, table on page 53 uh, reflects um, your understanding of what the reserves are. Um, and a journal has been done to um, which to, to make all the relevant transfers that were agreed at the last meeting. So the, the, the general reserve shown on page 53 includes that transfer, uh, Delia? The general reserve on page 53? Yeah. The actual um, 30th of June? Yeah, that's the actual. That's right. the correct. That's the actual, yeah. So that's where we are. And it okay. fits within this revised policy, should you choose to yeah. ad adopt it. Right. Any comments, anyone? We are yeah. in agreement with what we have so far, but it does show that we still have some latitude on uh, where our surpluses, if we generate any, well, we probably will this year, um, will, can go. Uh, I mean, we're still about 100 and... Um, £140,000 lower than our maximum of 50% on our general reserve. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. Which gives us a bit of latitude, Dina, yeah. doesn't it? It does give us some latitude, yes. I mean, the advice, the advice um, in the, um, from, from the practitioner's guide, which is the most important advice, part of it is statutory and part of it is advisory. And yeah. the three to 12 months is advisory. However, it is very strong advice. And I do think we should uh, take note of it. And as we are a larger council, we should be erring towards six months rather than 12 months yeah. um, if we go over the, the, uh, the three months. Uh, OK. Any other comments? Or shall we say that that report is noted? Can we recommend the policy to full council, please? Sorry, yes. Uh, recommend... if, you're, if you're minded to. Recommend yeah. policy to full council. I'll, I'll, and it's, can I have a second for that? Um, thank that, Michael. Those in favour? That's unanimous, thank you. The only other comment I'd like to add, Chair, if I may, is that we probably ought to review the investment strategy as well. And now that we've done the reserve strategy, um, we probably ought to review um, review the town council's investment strategy because the two kind of go together really it's about where we put the reserves and ensuring um security and liquidity so i think that is uh, another thing that needs to be done right because at the moment we've got it in into unit unitary trust and the unity trust trust then yeah it's actually shown on the balance sheet but i'm thinking of the actual policy the actual oh, investment right. okay. policy that i think we maybe is due to be reviewed okay yeah uh, what you'll bring that to i will bring that to a, to a future finance meeting so if you could just Thank note you. that um right if we can go to item 13 manor road site and garaging of vehicles yeah um, so do you want me to kick this one off do you yes please yeah, yes please chairman if you wouldn't mind right there is a slight difference of opinion as you can <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked for the item to go on uh, on the basis that of, because of the cost that we were had from our, our previous meeting, um, I considered, well, we considered them to be extremely high and that it therefore brought the Stoke Road lockup uh, to be a more viable option. Um, however, Delia has a slightly different view to that uh, in as much as that um, the... Um, the council has, has reached a decision in the last, within the last six months, um, and the rest of her, her, the notes are quite clear for, for, us, for us to see. Um, and Delia has suggested that we delay a decision before uh, until we get a, a more detailed report. However, my, my 
question really still remains is that if we are to get a full report on the best options for garaging, then surely one of our own assets must form part of that report. And for, to do that, we need to finalize a design um, and to cost it, and then to stop at that point, not to progress it any further, but so we know what the costs are to, for compare, comparison, to know what our asset is and what our liability if we then garage elsewhere. Ethan. Um, I'm not an expert chair, but I uh, wasn't in favour of, or well, I don't remember being in favour of development of this place. I, uh, um, I don't think the, the original plans would be suitable for one vehicle, let alone two. I think that the town council does have other options. I know that we saw a very expensive um, unit being proposed last week, but um, you know, for, as a temporary measure, if we needed to, there is a secure car park in Newton Leeds where they could be left, and it's and they're covered in cameras. So I feel that actually we've got options if the vehicles need to be secu more secure than they are at the library that we can do in the, in, in the short term so we can actually look at everything all, to, all together. But I, I still don't know at this point whether we could actually get a venue for two um, on the pump house site in Manor Road. So that would be my proposal to do now. Right, any other comment? Gary? Uh, I believe we should have a feasibility study uh, to look at the assets and liabilities, the best use of the pump house, of which that use of the pump house is to actually consider garaging. But um, the designs before were very expensive uh, for what we were getting. It does not mean we are proceeding, as the chair says. It's basically, it's information to make uh, a valued series of judgment at some future stage aside of what do we do with the pump house? What do we do with that asset? And where do we actually garage over time? That's what I think we should be doing. Any other comment? No? Uh, well, look, I, I'm, uh, I'll stick with where I was going um, and I'll make a proposal then that we um, complete uh, the design um, for a two gar two car two vehicle so, uh, garage solution at, at the site with additional storage um, up to but not including construction um, so that we we know final costs uh, and that this form part of the report for our garaging and storage needs in, for the future. Can I have a seconder? I think that would need to be a recommendation to council because there's already a decision. So we well, need a recommendation to council that this work should be done, that the decision should be overturned and this, this work we, should be we done. Need, we need a, a joint, a double resolution a double, yeah. to, say, yeah. to, to waive standing orders. Can I, anyway, this, this, I'll, I'll come yeah. back to one. Can I have a second there? Gary, did you do uh, Can I just point out, I think we basically need to have two resolutions here best use of pump uh, house site, and another, the feasibility uh, of uh, where to do the garaging at different lengths of times and the cost associated with that. There's oh, two yes. different things, but they could come together. Right, but okay. But we need to have a strategy on garaging security, and we do need to have a strategy of what we're doing with an asset site with a pump house, and they might dovetail together at some stage. Can I just so point I out, too. there is already a resolution in front of that, that full council have agreed to explore feasibility of that site for, for alternatives, mm -hmm. i.e. a garden, a sensory garden, or some other form of green landscaping. That decision has already been made by full council. So if, if I'm to change my focus of work from that to something else, um, okay. full, I need to be assured that full council want me to do that and use the resource on that. It's probably the council. This, it's probably the full council meeting I missed. You okay, but the, this, this clearly must be a recommendation to council. Yeah. And for council to consider it, they've got to uh, rescind the rescind standing orders. Which they can do. Which they, which can, they can do. do. Yeah. Um, but 
I, I, I say, I'm, I'm suggesting that this, this forms part of the uh, consideration for our future garaging and storage needs. And for, to do that, we need this piece of information. Do I have a second for, for the proposal? Gary, right. Those in favour of the proposal? Three. Those against? Two. Those abstained? One. That's carried. Cool. That's close, isn't it? Um, so. That'll go on next. That goes to full council on the 28th. Yeah. And. Uh, but it's a recommendation council that they also, to, to consider that, they must rescind standing orders. Yes. I'm sorry, suspend standing orders. They must, they must suspend standing orders and then they must be minded to follow your recommendation. That's it. Or shut it out. Whatever. So, so, yeah. Right. So that's, essentially, it's two recommendations to full council. Yeah, that's it. Right, thank you. Um... Where do we go now? Item 14, Milton Keynes Player Association. I'm just a bit anxious, um, Chairman, that we've missed item 10, which was um, an update on Newton Lee's allotment. Oh, uh, oh, I missed that. Sorry. Where's that gone? I, I missed it too. Um, it's a verbal update and it's because there are no papers, I think. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, no. Um, Can we go back to item 10 then? Sorry. Um, so just just to um, I just wanted to update the finance committee on the current position because there are financial implications to the situation we find ourselves in. Um, I think I reported previously that we received the lump sum um, from Milton Keynes Council, which um, has come from Taylor Wimpey and was paid to Milton Keynes Council in um, well before Christmas. And we, we received it last month. Um, and um, we're holding that. Um, however, we're not in a position to complete the legal transfer. And the reason for that is that the, all the piping um, on the site has now had to be removed. So the Taylor Wimpy's contractors have taken all the piping out from beneath the um, taps um, and, um, and are, they're in the process of replacing all the piping. Um, this means that the paths, the well-established ridings between the allotment plots have all had to be um, dug up to um, remove the pipes and to put the new pipes in. And as yet, we don't have a date for when that work will be completed, although I am assured by concept that it will be completed within the next um, short while. Um, this means that not only do we have to wait for the, the the water to test the water and make sure that this time the pipes have been put in correctly and there are no leaks, we now also have to replace the or that they will have to make good the, the paths, which will take more time. And the site itself, because it's uh, nothing's happened to it and the Taylor Wimpy has not been maintaining it during the time that the transfer has been pending, um, is now. Um, in a very poor condition. Um, I've written to uh, concept management and asked for confirmation that they will bring the site up to standard before the transfer, which will involve all the weed clearance. Oh, they've also dug up part of the car park in order to, um, do, to deal with the piping issues they've had to excavate in the car park. Uh, so there's quite a lot of work to do to make good. And, um, but we are extremely disappointed that um, a site which we thought we'd be in a position to start letting plots on in, in the spring, it, I doubt we're going to be able to let anything before September, even with a strong breeze following us. Wait, so wait, that's, the position, that's the position wait, we're in. Have they said a year for which spring? Have they said? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would, well, I mean, absolutely, but we were really, really hopeful this spring. Um, Ethan, Ethan, I'm sure you want to come in on this. I'm really disappointed. I think as are the local community and Absolutely. this this water issue has been going on for years. And 
uh, or, or, uh, for, for a while. And the I know the um, the residents of Santa Maria Lane, uh, which is where the, the, the allotments are, have also had their road dug up because it doesn't only extend. Um, so, so this is the second time that this has had to be done. And I just think it's really, really disappointing. Do, do we know what the problem is with the piping? Well, there are two issues with the site in terms of water. One is that there's always been flooding in a particular corner of the site, and it's not clear what what is causing that particular flooding. Um, but there's been addition. There's been it's now recognised and accepted by all parties that when the um, pipes were installed, they were installed incorrectly. There no record. There was no record of where the piping was. Um, I mean. And so that's why there's had to be this very extensive work. They couldn't find the leak, so they've had to re remove all the piping and replace it all. So I'm, I'm not clear how much of the leakage is from the pipes and how much of it is water that has settled yeah. on that corner of the site from you know, way back long before my time. I don't know. Um, but we were assured, um, I would say a year ago, that um, though that that would be dealt with, and it, um, the the water in the corner would be dealt with, which which hasn't happened, and since then the problems with the the, the taps and the um, pipes have come to light, and so obviously we can't accept transfer until the oh, land oh. is in a fit condition to accept. Is not I'm just going to say, Chair, that um, the corner that is flooded. Is directly um, um, it's a brook that flows from Drayton Parslow through Newton Lees um, and goes, you know, into the uh, central Bletchley. And I think that the, um, the 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 boggy corner is somehow connected with that brook because um, I don't live very close to it, but there. I've had numerous people here in Newton Lees who've said that it's always been that way on that field. Um, I think the concept project management seems pretty convinced that it's actually to do with the standing pipes for the water. And I, I, I don't necessarily know that. What, what I know is from mm -hmm. other areas in Newton Lees, um, it has taken a lot. Um, people don't really want to do investigation of what is they just want to fix the symptoms and um so i'm not i'm not sure how they can 100 percent know it's coming from a standpoint i'm not sure that they know either well, it's pretty easy though pretty easy it's chlorinated water in the pipe work if it's if it's chlorinated water on on the, on the end of the field it's coming from the pipes if it's not then it's not coming from the pipe work that's basic, isn't it? Anyway, thank you. Just to go me. back on that, sorry, Chair, I, I was at a meeting and I believe that it was agreed that, that I think it was at the same meeting with Delia that they were going to put a land drain in that corner into the brook. And it also appears that they've then they're kind of winding their head back in from that. So I'm not sure what, what the plan is. Okay. Right, uh, Gary, then we'll. Well, uh, basically, this is all about acceptance into service, fit for purpose, um, completing things to approve standards, uh, accepting liabilities from someone who then will just disown it. We don't have any sort of indications that are not going to make the situation worse and actually end up with like a canal solution into the area with the drainage going the wrong way. So if you don't have the root cause, you don't know what the permanent solution is. And if it's a sticking plaster solution, we know we just have to make it voice. We are not accepting this because it's affecting our residents and we're certainly not going to be accepting this at all. And okay. make that very well, clear. That's quite clear that we aren't. So we are uh, adhering to what you, you clearly want. Uh, Dean, is there anything else we, we, we need to want to add or we just note the report? Well, um note the report unless there's any um anyone's got any um 
and good ideas about how how we might um, be able to um, exert more influence on on um, Taylor Wimpy. Um, I the 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 um, regional manager that we previously had a good relationship with has um, has moved on. Uh, and I mean, it might be that one of the things we could do is um, um, sorry, I just saw a Facebook message come up. Um, one of the things we could do is ask for a meeting with his replacement, which I think might be the way to proceed. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 sometime when someone's got a few minutes, they could show me where the site is. I have no idea where it is. Oh, but, we'll, we'll take you to see it, Keith. Okay, Ethan. Um, I'm more than happy to show you, Keith, next time you're this way visiting people. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and also, um, uh, I, I'm more than happy um, to um, be in that meeting and, you know, as a members with greater kinds of understanding of building and construction methods want to attend, I'd welcome that as well. But I think it will probably be. Um, a video conference meeting to do that, but I can also provide plans and some pictures if that's helpful as well. Okay. So, uh, is, uh, uh, Eamon? Yeah, I'd like to have a look, see if it's my game anyway, isn't it? Well, you don't know where it is either? I don't know where it is, but I probably no. know the solution. Right. Um, anything else, do you know, or is that it now? No, that's it. Um, that, that's it on the allotments. Thank you. So, I mean, obviously we are, do we have, you know, we've, repeatedly put our position via our solicitor and um, via yeah. direct communication um, with with um, both contact and Taylor Wimpy. So um, we will continue with that. And so we'll, we'll, we'll aim, the aim for the meeting. So we've noted the report. Yeah. And, uh, um, and I'll continue to report. Yeah. OK. Um, so can we, do we miss any others, do you? Know? No, we don't. Know. No. No, no. So item read 14 now then? Yes. The item 14 I think is quite straightforward. Yeah. Um, in that um, this is a, a, about our um, Easter and summer play sessions that we fund that are delivered by Milton Keynes Play Association. D Jill's done a report on page 59 um, with um, uh, which sort of spells out what we weren't able to do at Easter and what we had planned for the summer, which um, we um, we also can't deliver. So there are now two options for the summer play scheme. So we can either spend the, um, we can go with either of the two options in the report. Um, uh, as we haven't spent any money on the Easter play scheme and as, um, we feel that the community are desperately in need of um, opportunities for children to do stimulating and helpful activities. Uh, we've recommended uh, increasing the number of play sessions within the existing budget that we have for play sessions. Right. And then you've got a, a supplementary report which explains all the arrangements which have been made for um, social distancing and safety of the children. Right, Ethan? Um, very much support increasing um, the, the use of this scheme. Um, I think it's something that's desperately needed at the moment. Um, a lot of private pro provision has actually been removed uh, for the summer. Um, and there's two major um, activity companies that are not having their summer um, use. I know this because I normally use them. Um, and I think some schools are running some provision, but they're doing two weeks or raw, as opposed to the entire holiday. So I think that this is something that our community will really appreciate. Yeah. Um, and, and also I'm worried about people who have been furloughed or have whatever issues or lost their jobs and will be struggling to fill children's activities um, during the summer and maybe not even able to afford a hol holiday this year. So I think our community would really appreciate it. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, Michael? Absolutely. I completely agree with all of that. Um, everything that's gone on lately, community needs it. And as long as it's safe and all these 
measures are in place and hopefully we keep going in the right direction, then yes, we should. I mean, t- taking the gist of what Ethan and Michael are saying, I mean, uh, is there any opportunity, Delia, for investigating increasing provision? Well, obviously, the um, the um, yes, we can ask we can ask about it. Um, the we've worked within the existing budget, um, so if we um, because the, the the sessions delivered under this new regime are more expensive yeah. than the sessions delivered under the old regime, we've suggested just increasing um, so that we can so that we we spend we, we deliver what we'd already committed to, yeah. but obviously at a higher cost. If we want to increase that further, I can explore that with MK Play. I mean, we we're, we're, more sessions. I mean, we're not embarrassed for money. There's no. so much we're not spending money on. And I mean, my, my great granddaughters, they're going bananas. There's three of them. And they, they are, I, I don't agree with Ethan. Uh, Gary first, then Ethan. Uh, I basically support the chair. We should look for additional provision because of the mental welfare. Uh, I mean, the amount of damage we get from vandalism and other costs, we've got to let off controlled steam and places around the, like the Warren and the Lakes must have a, some extra provision because a lot of people can't afford it. So please, you know, your suggestion, Chair, let's go ahead with that. Uh, Ethan? Um, so, Chair, I was just going to say that I think from, from the report, there are three sessions a week. In, in different places in uh, around Newton Lees, uh, so around the, the parish. parish. And I didn't know whether actually we should strive to provide five. So at least that may, would mean that there would be one every day if people wanted to move around the parish okay. that they could do. Uh, but, uh, but at least it means that there'd be something going on every day apart from the bank holiday um, period. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not even... Uh, objecting to to, a, to a, something beyond that, if, if that's what possible, um, you know, visiting a particular site more than once a week. Um, I think um, I think what I'll need to do is investigate this with the provider and see what yes. their capacity is, because obviously there are capacity issues for all yes. organisations at the moment. But I think I've got. I mean, if, if you approve that we we um, if you're happy that we spend the bud- the existing budget. And I will try and get some more uh, figures together for um, the next occasion um, for council. See if we can do anything else over the summer. Thank you, Delia. Michael? Proposal time, unless anyone's got any more points. So my proposal is that the recommendation that we go with the additional sessions, as is laid out here, with the investigation into expanding it further Right. That's that's your, that's your second, Ron? Yeah, yeah. Because in the past, I've had people say to me, with a, you know, they couldn't afford an holiday and they used to play, play things in Leon Rec and up the lakes. They said uh, they've been a godsend to them when they could, just couldn't afford an holiday that year. You know, yeah. and that, that's in the past. Not like uh, even now, it's even worse. Mm-hmm. Okay, so those, can I have a second? Oh, you sort of said a second. I'll second those, that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah sorry, Ron. I've, I've got that bit. Th- those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. Um, now it's item 15. So we're on the final item. Which I don't, I've got document is restricted. Huh. You know, I've got that. I haven't got it in my pack either. Can I just double check? Has anybody it's... got the private report? Youth Network, Milton Keynes on provision of youth services. Yes, and have you got the paperwork? No, I haven't looked at that bit. But that's on the agenda. Yes, and it's also been, it is, this is a problem we've had before with modern GERF where, because I'm just, I'm just going into it now to um, just to check what's happened. What page are we talking about? It will be the next page after all the papers that you've talked about. It comes after page 20. Ethan, did you want to come in on something? I was just to say that I know, think I know what the issue is. On the email that we get sent out from Modern Gov, it has 
it asks people to either look up the info on the uh, the Bletchley website or the extranet. I, I can see the report because I'm logged into the extranet and everybody should have been given a username and a password from Jill that they, they can been. use to, to log in. And I know that I got one. And so I, but I just always remember to log in. I think if we could change the email so there's only one link, it might actually be more helpful. I'll try and do that. That email is standardised and that's how it's produced by Modern Gov. But I, I'm sure we can look into that because you, do, you will not be able to see um, your private papers unless you go onto the um, internet. Or you've logged into the app. It, or you've logged into the app. Yeah, it's no good looking at the website. Right. Um, um, now, I'm just going to see if that I think that may be too much for me to share on on screen um, um, uh, but I'll just have a look and see if I can Um, yeah, it is restricted because there's, there's commercially sensitive information in part of it, and I couldn't put all of it um, online. So if I'm going to share the documents on screen, which I, even if we don't make a decision, I would like the opportunity to talk about this one, but as it, it does include... Um, information about costs or at least it's, it should do which was requested by the committee on a previous occasion but I can't see it sorry I've got it. Yes, page um, page seventy one is um, is the, the page that I don't think I can share on um, screen. So um, if you want to, if you want me to share these documents on the screen, and it's possible that you may wish to consider this anyway, um, if you want to discuss the um, the request from um, Youth Network MK. I wonder if you consider that it, we ought to exclude the um, public at this point because of the confidentiality of some of the information in the report. Um, uh, those in favour of excluding the public. Wait, can I just uh, chair? Yeah. We've got uh, two additional items as well, which are for public to do with the uh, Bletchham Way and also the um, national bowl that was sent out as this is missing from uh, the agenda. Those so, are not agenda items, uh, councillor. They're not agenda items. They were just you sent out for information. Yeah, you can't check for the finance meeting. So you can't do it, Gary. Yeah, they're, they're just agenda. They're just emails about um, info. It's just about um, it's just correspondence for information. It's not on the finance agenda. It says agenda for the finance committee. That's what it actually okay. says on the email. Well, maybe you'd like to send me the email um, uh, uh, because I, I don't know which email you're talking about. It's the those... 10th of the uh, July 2020 at 14.01. We're all on it. And it basically says not included in the agenda for the finance committee next week. So it's an apology that we're not on the finance. Oh, that's about a planning. That's about a planning application. That's not on the agenda and it won't be, it, it can't be added to the agenda late. I'm just saying the, what the wording is, that's all. Yes, yes, but it doesn't say that it's not, It what it was doing was alerting you to some planning application which will not be considered at committee and giving the opportunity to ah, make individual representations. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh it would, yeah, yeah. Right, come on. 
anyway, it's, it's yeah, not. Yeah, we've it's clarified. Not we've clarified that it's not on the agenda. No. So the only remaining item on the agenda is the report from Youth Network, and um, I think you were just about to consider whether to exclude the public, Chairman. But so we take a vote on excluding the, the public and press. Those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. So. That how do we get to the agenda item now, Delia? I'm going to share it on screen with you in a moment, but I just, and with your permission, um, Chairman, I'll just stop the live um, yep. screening. Um, and um, obviously any decision that's made will be um, during this part of the meeting will then be um, recorded in the minutes and published so that those people who weren't able to observe this part of the meeting will be able to find out what was decided, if anything. Right. 